Welcome back to Football Ancestry. Today, we are going to re-examine the Bill Belichick coaching tree. The second video I ever posted on this channel looked at the Belichick coaching tree, and that was back in 2020. A lot has changed since then, including Belichick coaching his final game in New England, and quite possibly his last game in the NFL. So with that being said, let's get started by taking a brief look at Belichick's coaching career before we jump into the names that make up his coaching tree. Belichick started his NFL career in 1975 at 23 years old, working as an assistant on the Baltimore Colts. Then he moved over to assistant special teams and then receivers coach for the Detroit Lions. In 1978, he would work as a defensive and special teams assistant for the Denver Broncos. Belichick was bouncing around to several different teams and roles as he worked his way up the coaching ladder, as one might expect. However, not to spoil anything for later, but that wasn't always the case for the names on Belichick's own coaching tree. Either way, Belichick did finally stick around somewhere when he joined the New York Giants in 1979 as a linebackers and special teams coach. But it wasn't until Bill Parcells took over in 1983 that Bill began to really flourish. He would be promoted to defensive coordinator in 1985 and hold that position for five years, learning everything he could under Parcells. Belichick won two Super Bowls with Parcells in 1986 and 1990, and it was Belichick's defensive performance in Super Bowl 25 that pushed him over the edge to get his first head coaching job. Belichick would be the Cleveland Browns head coach from 1991 to 1995, going 36 and 44 with only one winning season and one playoff win to show for it. Belichick would be fired and return to be an assistant under Bill Parcells, but this time on a new team, the New England Patriots. His time in New England only lasted one season though, as Bill Parcells moved on to coach the Jets in 1997 instead, bringing Belichick along with him as his defensive coordinator and future succession plan. So when Parcells left the Jets in 1999, Belichick was announced to be their new head coach. However, Belichick had other plans. At his introductory press conference, Belichick announced his resignation as Jets head coach and quickly signed with the Patriots to be their next head coach instead. This little maneuver would cost the Patriots a first round draft pick as compensation, but given what was about to happen next, they would make that deal 100% of the time. As we all know, Belichick would go on to coach the New England Patriots for the next 24 years, leading his team to 9 Super Bowl appearances and winning 6 of them compiling 266 wins to just 121 losses during that time frame, and taking home three NFL Coach of the Year awards. It truly was a dynasty like never seen before, and possibly one that will never be seen again. So given all this stupendous success, one would have to imagine his coaching tree would reflect that, right? Well, I'll let you decide. Let's finally dive into the Bill Belichick coaching tree. Our very first coach on the Belichick coaching tree is Eric Mangini. He got his first NFL gig as an entry-level coaching assistant in 1995 with the Browns under Belichick. He earned his first non-entry-level assistant job in 2000, also under Belichick, though this time with the Patriots, now a defensive backs coach. He held that title until 2005, when he was promoted to defensive coordinator. It is from there that Mangini would be given the opportunity to become head coach of the New York Jets in 2006. Mangini actually made the playoffs in his first season, though losing in the wildcard round to the Patriots. A collapse in 2007, and losing four of their final five games to miss the playoffs in 2008, would lead to Mangini being fired. It's also safe to say that there was some bad blood between Mangini and his mentor, as not only did Belichick hand Mangini a loss in his lone playoff appearance, but Mangini also caught Belichick's Patriots illegally recording Jets' defensive signals, a scandal that would become known as Spygate. Either way, Mangini had done an alright job with the Jets, and so the Browns immediately gave him another head coaching chance in 2009. After back-to-back 5-11 seasons though, Mangini would be fired. He finished his head coaching career with a total of 33 wins and 47 losses. You might recognize the next name on our list, legendary Alabama coach Nick Saban. 
While most of Saban's career was in collegiate football, his NFL experience can be traced to Bill Belichick's Cleveland Browns, where he served as Belichick's defensive coordinator from 1991 to 1994. Following his time on the Browns, he would jump back to the college ranks, all the way up until 2005, when he would return to the NFL as the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. Saban would win nine games in his first year, but fall short of the playoffs. Saban's team then stumbled to a 6-10 finish the following year, before Saban bolted to be the head coach of the University of Alabama. And well, we all know how that went for Saban, worked out pretty well for him. Now, although his time as an NFL head coach only lasted two seasons, it did technically lead to several new, albeit weaker, branches of the coaching tree. Jason Garrett falls under Nick Saban's NFL coaching tree because Saban was actually Garrett's gateway into NFL coaching. Garrett's first NFL coaching job was as Saban's quarterbacks coach in 2005 and 2006 while with the Miami Dolphins. And Garrett would then head to the Cowboys to be offensive coordinator under Wade Phillips, before taking over as the head man himself in Dallas for a decade. Meanwhile, Scott Linehan only spent one season under Nick Saban in 2005, serving as his offensive coordinator. But he did immediately turn that opportunity into a head coaching job for the Rams from 2006 to 2008, so I'll also loosely include him under Nick Saban's coaching tree. Moving on down our list, the next coach on the tree is Romeo Cornell. Cornell was in the NFL for two decades as a special teams and defensive line coach before joining up with Belichick. However, Cornell wouldn't get the opportunity to serve as a defensive coordinator until Belichick's Patriots gave him that opportunity to do so from 2001 to 2004, which then launched him into a head coaching position with the Cleveland Browns from 2005 to 2008. During his tenure there, he went an abysmal 24 and 40. In 2010, Cornell would be hired as the Chiefs defensive coordinator, and after head coach Todd Haley was fired mid-season in 2011, Cornell was named as the interim head coach, going 2-1. This was apparently enough to make Cornell the full-time coach for the 2012 season. Cornell would match those two wins from his previous season, finishing 2-14 before being fired. Cornell would return to what he was good at, being a defensive coordinator in 2014 for the Houston Texans. He would get one last opportunity to be a head coach in 2020, serving as the Texans' interim head coach following the departure of Bill O'Brien, and going 4-8. Overall, Cornell finished with a 32-63 win-loss record. Now we get into some names on the coaching tree that I refer to as Bill Belichick loyalists. These guys spend the vast majority of their coaching careers under only Belichick. Our first coach is Josh McDaniels, who got his first NFL gig as a personnel assistant under Bill Belichick in 2001. McDaniel would transition to a defensive assistant before landing as the quarterback's coach in 2004, and eventually as the offensive coordinator in 2006. He held the title of offensive coordinator for three years until the Denver Broncos offered McDaniels to be their head coach in 2009. His time in Denver would be less than inspiring getting fired after just one and a half seasons. McDaniels would return to an offensive coordinator position, this time with the Rams under Steve Spagnuolo in 2011. That would be McDaniels' only season coaching under somebody other than Bill Belichick, as he would return to be the Patriots' offensive coordinator from 2012 all the way to 2021. The Raiders would give McDaniels a second chance at being a head coach in 2022, but that experiment also ended after just one and a half seasons. In total, as a head coach, McDaniels only won 20 games compared to 33 losses. Our next main branch to the Belichick coaching tree is Bill O'Brien, whose entire NFL coaching career has come as an assistant under Bill Belichick other than his time as head coach. He was first hired in 2007 as a simple offensive assistant under Belichick, but then took over as wide receivers coach and then quarterbacks coach before becoming offensive coordinator in 2011. O'Brien would then jump ship back to the college level as head coach at Penn State, before returning to the NFL in 2014 as head coach of the Houston Texans. He held that spot until 2020 earning a 52-48 record during that time, which should be celebrated. It's our first winning record mentioned under the Belichick coaching tree. And while his time with the Texans was relatively successful in terms of wins and losses, behind the scenes wasn't so good. 
O'Brien would take over as both head coach and general manager in 2019. And with his most notable and heavily criticized move being trading away superstar wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. O'Brien would then be fired after four straight losses to start the following season after the trade. Interpret that information however you like. O'Brien did, however, add one notable name to the coaching tree. Mike Vrabel technically falls under Bill O'Brien's coaching tree, as Vrabel spent four years as O'Brien's linebackers coach and defensive coordinator on the Texans before taking over as the head coach in Tennessee. However, Vrabel also spent 14 years playing linebacker in the NFL, with his most productive time coming in the eight years playing linebacker for Bill Belichick. So while technically in terms of coaching, he would fall under O'Brien's coaching tree, I think Brabel also deserves to be directly included on Belichick's own coaching tree. So, with that being said, the next coach on the coaching tree is Mike Vrabel, who registers our second and, sadly last, winning record on the Bill Belichick coaching tree, going 54-45 and in his time with the Titans. Vrabel would actually reach the AFC Championship game in his second season as head coach of the Titans, but losing to the eventual 2019 Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. Vrabel would continue to stack winning seasons in Tennessee, even earning NFL Head Coach of the Year in 2021 after a 12-5 campaign. However, another quick playoff exit and then consecutive losing seasons to follow would lead to Vrabel's dismissal following the 2023 season. Before he was fired, Mike Vrabel was responsible for adding another name to the overall coaching tree, Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith entered the NFL as a quality control assistant with Washington in 2007 for two seasons, before heading to the Titans in 2011, working his way up from quality control coach to assistant tight ends to tight ends, and finally, offensive coordinator. Smith survived three different head coaching changes in Tennessee before Vrabel took over in 2018. Smith would be given the offensive coordinator title under Vrabel in 2019 and 2020 before taking over as the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons from 2021 to 2023. Like several prominent names on this list, our next coach, Matt Patricia, is another Bill Belichick loyalist, spending 16 of his 20 years coaching in the NFL as an assistant under Belichick. Patricia got his start as an offensive assistant in 2004, an assistant offensive line coach in 2005, before swapping over to the defensive side in 2006 as a linebackers coach. He held that title until 2011, when he moved to safeties coach. Finally, in 2012, Patricia would be given the defensive coordinator title under Bill Belichick, which he would hold for the next six seasons. That's when, in 2018, the Detroit Lions gave Patricia a shot to lead his own NFL team. And, like many Belichick loyalists, his time away from the Patriots did not end well, getting just 13 wins in his three years with Detroit. Patricia would then return to New England as an assistant head coach in 2021 before taking over as de facto offensive coordinator in 2022. Patricia would then serve as a senior defensive assistant and de facto defensive coordinator for the Eagles in 2023. Our next coach, Brian Flores, keeps the trend of longtime Belichick loyalists going. Flores spent 15 of his 20 years in the NFL as a member of Bill Belichick's staff. Flores actually started in Belichick's scouting department from 2004 to 2007, before becoming a special teams assistant in 2008 and 2009. In 2010, Flores served as both an offensive assistant and a special teams coach. It wasn't until 2011 that Flores first became a defensive assistant, the side of the ball that he's most known for. Flores would coach safeties and then linebackers for Belichick's Patriots up until 2019, when Flores was given the opportunity to be head coach of the Miami Dolphins. Flores led a complete rebuild in Miami, squeezing out five wins in 2019 with one of the least talented rosters in recent NFL history before leading Miami to back-to-back -back winning seasons in 2020 and 2021. Flores' teams fell just short of the playoffs both years, but it would still come as a bit of a shock when Flores was fired by the Dolphins in 2021. It was a messy departure with lawsuits and rumors of toxic work environments from both sides. Either way, Flores would return to coaching linebackers, but this time in Pittsburgh in 2022, and then take over as defensive coordinator with the Vikings in 2023. 
Moving to our next coach on our list, we have Joe Judge, who has been employed in the NFL for a total of 12 years. And given the last few coaches on our list, you can probably guess how many of those 12 years Judge worked as an assistant under Bill Belichick. The answer would be 10 of those 12 years. Judge, up to this point in his career at least, has never worked under any coach other than Bill Belichick in the NFL. He got started in 2012 as a special teams assistant before taking over as a special teams coordinator in 2015, a position he held until 2020. That's when Judge took over as the head coach of the New York Giants. The simplest way to describe Judge's Giants is as a disaster, with many questionable decisions. Judge would only last two seasons and, like many Belichick disciples, he returned to New England following the end of his stint as a head coach. Joe Judge finished with a 10-23 record. Okay, let's finally shake things up a little bit with our next coach on the list, Brian Dayball. While Dayball did get his NFL coaching start in New England, working as a defensive assistant in 2000 and 2001, before switching to wide receivers coach in 2002, Dayball would actually make a few stops on teams other than the Patriots before getting his head coaching gig. Dayball coached receivers in New England until 2007, when he got a job as quarterbacks coach with the Jets for two years. He earned his first offensive coordinator job in 2009 with the Browns, before moving on to the Dolphins in 2011, and then the Chiefs in 2012. Following disappointing results in his last two offensive coordinator spots, Dayball would return back home, being hired as an assistant and then tight ends coach for Belichick's Patriots from 2013 to 2016. After a stop as offensive coordinator at Alabama, Dayball would regain his title as NFL offensive coordinator in 2018 with the Bills. He would work his magic there with Josh Allen before taking the head coaching opening with the Giants in 2022. Dayball would lead the Giants to a surprising playoff berth in his first year, finishing 9-7-1 and and winning their wildcard game before losing the divisional round. This would earn Dayball the Coach of the Year award. However, 2023 would be seen as a disappointment as the expectations had grown so much from the surprising success of the previous season, as Dayball's Giants would stumble to 6-11 and in year 2. From Cinderella story to dumpster fire in two years. I'm not sure how to predict Dayball's future with the Giants going forward. Will he be able to regain his success from the first season? I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on Dayball's future. And after all of that, we are left with our final coach on the Bill Belichick coaching tree, Gerard Mayo. Returning to a similar mold as before, Mayo was a player before turning to a head coach. Mayo played eight years as a linebacker in Bill Belichick's New England Patriots defense, earning Defensive Rookie of the Year, All-Pro, and two Pro Bowls. Following Mayo's retirement from playing in 2015, Mayo would get into coaching, joining Belichick's staff as a linebacker's coach in 2019. He would hold that title for several years, gaining the respect of those in the building. As Mayo began to get attention for promotions elsewhere, the Patriots organization would give Mayo a contract extension, keeping him in New England with a clause to become their successor to Bill Belichick. So as Belichick and the Patriots parted ways, Mayo stepped in as heir apparent in 2024. Mayo will have quite the challenging rebuild ahead of him. Will he be able to pull it off and work his way out of the shadow of Belichick's 24 years coaching the Patriots? Only time will tell. So there you have it, the coaching tree of the legendary Bill Belichick. It's quite astonishing to look back on. A man who coached on such a high level for so long, and still he has yet to produce a single coaching disciple that can replicate a fraction of his success. There have been some who have looked promising, but faltered or crumbled in some way, and others who never stood a chance. Is that to say any of the coaches still out there won't eventually figure it out and hold a successful head coaching career? It's certainly possible, but the track record isn't promising. Belichick had a system, one that was perfected and fine-tuned to work under certain conditions, and one that he operated at an extreme level. Belichick was a mastermind defensive coach, bolstered by the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. And when paired together in Belichick's no-nonsense culture, they created an unstoppable football machine. Thank you so much for watching along. If you made it this far into the video, I greatly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and give this video a like, and consider subscribing to stay notified of future uploads. 
how would you define Belichick's legacy? And does the coaching tree affect it at all? Let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.